Hello YouTube, this is JD with Red Barrel Skis, a YouTube channel dedicated to teaching folks how to make skis. Today I'm here to answer one question. What is inside an alpine ski? Well, frankly, there's a whole heck of a lot going on inside of an alpine ski. There's a bunch of different layers, quite a few different materials, some pretty complicated geometry. So let's get into it. What we have here is a generic model of a ski. Often people include carbon fiber and titanol, which is a metal layer, but for these purposes, we're just gonna look at a generic ski. One point I must make is that I have modeled all these layers as two-dimensional planes, flat objects. Uh, they get the curvature for the tip and the tail and the camber once you put them in the press. Um, so for just checking out what goes on inside a ski, we're gonna leave it at that. Starting at the bottom, the part that makes contact with the snow is the ski base. This part is made of a high density polyethylene sheet. You can order it either sintered or extruded and in different grades. The grade, for example 6000 or 9000 grade, represents the density of the molecules. And that relates to how impact resistant or tough it is and how likely you are to get a core shot. It comes in a variety of colors, even natural or transparent. That way you can put some graphics underneath that can be seen through. Often companies will cut out different puzzle pieces of logos and graphics and assemble a base to give it more character. I like to add a small recess to the base for the metal edges. You can also wrap it around the tip and the tail, but the metal edges come from the factory hardened, and so you'll want to anneal it or heat it up till it's bright orange and let it cool down slow to get that tight curvature. The metal edges have a whole bunch of little holes going down their length. These are like little pockets that the glue seeps into to help hold it on. Also, the profile of the metal edges wraps around the base. This makes sure that your base is flat and gives more surface area for the glue to make contact with holding your edge inside of your ski and not halfway down the mountain. The next layer of the assembly is typically a thin rubber strip known commonly as the VDS or vibration dampening strip. This layer helps reduce chatter as you're carving down the mountain and also gives a little better adherence between the metal edges and the rest of the ski. The next layer going up is fiberglass. This can be exchanged or reinforced with Kevlar or carbon fiber or titanol depending on the performance characteristics you're trying to get out of your ski. But this along with the core thickness and the other layer of fiberglass are the main contributing members to the overall stiffness and flex of the ski. At the heart of the ski is the core. The core is either foam or wood. For me it's vertically laminated hard and soft woods. I use hardwoods where the bindings screw in. I use softwoods more or less everywhere else just to keep it lightweight. On both sides of the core, there's another layer of plastic called the sidewall. The sidewall acts like a bumper for the ski. It helps prevent moisture from getting into that wood core and it also stiffens it up. Thus, reducing chatter and vibrations helps improve dampening and overall edge hold and is typically only found in the high performance skis. Another construction style called cap construction is where they wrap the fiberglass over the wood core all the way down to the lower fiberglass layer. But all the skis I make have a full length sidewall. You can see in the model here what look like gaps. Those are glue interfaces, so wood to wood is held together with wood glue and wood to sidewall is held together with epoxy.
In front and behind the core are tip and tail fill. These are high density polyethylene sheets once again, but they are sandblasted on both sides. The base material is sandblasted only on one side. It also has a slightly different thickness. Next, we have another layer of fiberglass. I usually use around 20 ounce per square foot triaxial fiberglass. Triaxial means there's fibers oriented along three different directions, usually parallel with the length of the ski and then plus or minus 45 degrees. And finally, the top sheet. The top sheet is, surprise surprise, another layer of plastic, but this time nylon. Nylon is a little more durable and it pairs well with the process of dye sublimation. That is how you get the graphics onto the top sheet. It's basically printing off with a special ink onto a special paper your graphics and then using a heated press to sublimate those graphics down into the plastic. It's nifty because the graphics go deeper than they would if you use a process like silk screening, which is also very common. So yeah, that pretty much does it. That's what's going on inside an alpine ski. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe. I'm gonna be doing monthly videos. Um, I appreciate you sticking through this one. It was pretty long. Uh, as always, ski fast, take chances. Thanks.